Hey guys, it's your friendly neighborhood reviewer with Intuit Reviews. Welcome back to the neighborhood. So let's talk about the FIO FH1S. This is a dual driver hybrid IEM featuring a Knowles balanced armature with a 13.6 millimeter dynamic driver that is produced by FIO. Sounds similar to another IEM I recently reviewed? Well that's because it is. The makeup of the FH1S is very similar to the Jade Audio EA3. In fact, you could say that the FH1S is the sister IEM to the EA3, or vice versa. Despite both IEMs sharing some physical attributes, they also have some differences, including the sound. So let's get into it. But before we get started guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. And just a quick reminder that at the 1000 subscriber mark, I'll be giving away another set of COS KSC-75s. To be considered for the giveaway, like the video, make a comment, subscribe, and consider following the channel on Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and at the blog site as well. Each follow location will provide you with an additional entry into the giveaway. So let's get into the FIO FH1S. The FH1S comes in one of four different colors, black, orange, green, or purple. The purple variety that I have here is courtesy of Dave from DBS Tech Talks, so make sure to head over to his channel and show him some love as well. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description so you can get there after you finish with this video. So let's get right into it. The wire on the FH1S is comprised of 120 core LITS monocrystalline copper which initiates in a 2 pin connector. And although the wire is thicker and ultimately nicer to the touch, it behaves in a similar manner to the wire on the EA3 as it is prone to bends and not lying perfectly flat. Unlike the EA3's small straight termination, the FH1S has a medium sized angle connector depending on your preference there. Sound wise, I could not determine any sonic differences between the cable on the FH1S versus the EA3, despite FIO's claim of enhanced sonic consistency on the FH1S cable on their website. I will say that I like the red and blue connectors on the FH1S more than the markers on the EA3 as they are hidden and located underneath the 2 pin connector on the FH1S cable rather than being notably visible as they are on the EA3. This was a nice touch, and honestly the FH1S should have more nice touches as its price point is higher than that of the EA3. Other than a nicer cable, what you get in the package that exceeds the accessories of the EA3 set is a nice hard clamshell carrying case instead of the EA3's small sized soft cloth pouch. The silicone tips that come with the FH1S seem to be the exact same set that comes with the EA3, but I also see that pictures on FIO's website show that there may also be a set of foams that come with the FH1S as well but Dave did not include those foams for my review. One last thing to note about the build is that the angle of the nozzle on the FH1S is slightly less aggressive and is therefore slightly more comfortable with stock tips in my ears. But my wife, who has very small ears, actually found the EA3 to fit her ears better, so your mileage may vary. In general, my take would be that in terms of build quality, Everything is a bit more well built on the FH1S, but not by leaps and bounds. And I actually prefer the more pronounced celluloid striations of the electric teal colored EA3 compared to the more understated colors on the FH1S. Upon first listen, I use the included red board tips as a direct comparison point between the two IEMs. And while this accentuated differences, I ultimately found that the FH1S sounded better with its included black tips, 
while the EA3 sounded best with its grayed out redboard tips in general. Tonality of the FH1S is drier and more sterile, but I do think that Theo delivers on its promise of a balanced sound signature here. The bass is rather neutral in presentation, but it can be enhanced somewhat with tip selection. Overall, the bass is tight and well controlled for the most part, but it does have a one note passive radiator like sound to it, and unlike some passive radiators and speakers, it actually tightens up and resolves rather quickly. Bass, however, is definitely not the star of the show here, and I would say that it is more holistically laid back as an IEM with the FH1S. Vocals and harmonies are also somewhat laid back on the FH1S, but fairly neutral overall. Oddly, while the mids and the treble are also laid back here, there is a certain crispiness to the sound quality of the mids, and to the treble, which, although pleasant with some music, also lends itself to some mild graininess in the upper mid-range and the top end of the treble. However, this was unique in contrast to the rest of the presentation. The EA3 has more honey tones to its BA than the FH1S does, as the balance armature in the FH1S sounds somewhat cold and sterile in comparison. Both appear to be equally revealing and resolving to my ears. The FH1S might have the tiniest amount more treble extension to it, but this was barely noticeable, if at all, with most music, and this may have contributed to some slight harshness at the top end of the FH1S's treble, which was really only emphasized on poorly recorded tracks. In contrast, the EA3 was slightly rolled off at the top end of the treble, which resulted in a perception of increased smoothness with the EA3. This despite the EA3 being more forward and intense overall with its mid-range, treble presentation, and vocals compared to the FH1S. In particular, male vocals seemed recessed in comparison on the FH1S. For example, on Aerosmith's Shut Up and Dance, the EA3's presentation sounded more like what I have come to expect from that track, while vocals were clearly diminished in their forwardness on the FH1S. Guitar tones also sounded off and thin on this example. If I were being overly critical, I might say that the FH1S seemed less clear in the top end at times, thinner, harsher, and more metallic sounding than the EA3, despite these tones having less presence than on that of the EA3. Having said that, the FH1S was also more balanced in its vocal presentation at times compared to the EA3 despite complex vocals and harmonizations actually sounding clearer on the EA3. Bass on the FH1S is more tightly controlled, but also less impactful, textured, and layered than that of the EA3. There is more of a mid-bass hump in the EA3, whereas the mid-bass seems to be purposefully underrepresented on the FH1S. For example, on the track Elevate by DJ Khaled from the Into the Spider-Verse soundtrack, there seems to be somewhat of a scoop somewhere between the mid-bass and the upper bass region. If I was being uber critical of both IEMs, I would say that the bass is somewhat thuddy on the FH1S and looming and somewhat hazy on the EA3. Overall, low in presentation is less hazy on the FH1S, but the bass of the EA3 is fuller, more forward, and blended better with the Knowles driver. Additionally, impact is almost non-existent on the FH1S, whereas the EA3 has impact in spades. Overall separation between instruments across the range is better on the FH1S than on the EA3. Imaging was slightly more precise on the FH1S when tested with a variety of Yoshi Hirokawa tracks as well. Soundstage width on both IEMs was just above average, and was essentially a toss-up between the two, but the FH1S had increased depth and distance to the instruments from the listening positions, which sounds like a good thing, but I actually would have preferred that the main stage be less distant on the FH1S even if the EA3 could have used a bit more distance here. Although the overall presentation of the EA3 was somewhat more claustrophobic, I still preferred its cumulative stage to the FH1S's in the end. 
I should also note that the EA3 performed better off low power sources and was easier to drive, whereas the FH1S performed better when being driven off of an amp for added power and flavor, as I found the FH1S lacking in engagement with both its vocals and mid-range presentation without the aid of an amplifier. I became somewhat apathetic with the FH1S when being driven off my phone, and this ultimately contributed to listening fatigue. The EA3 was also more source dependent, performing better on neutral to neutral warm sources, whereas the FH1S appeared less source dependent. While I ultimately liked the presentation of both the FH1S and the EA3, I found the EA3 to be more energetic, lively, and engaging between the two, despite also being very slightly more rolled off up top. In my opinion, the bass was slightly overdone on the EA3 and slightly underdone on the FH1S, but both were pleasing in their own way. The FH1S was generally more analytic and balanced, and the EA3 was generally more fun and intense. Neither I am was shouty or sibilant or overly aggressive to my ears, and the honey-toned smoothness of the EA3 made its intensity generally more tolerable and acceptable. Metaphorically, I kind of think of the Jade Audio EA3 as like the friend that's a little too much, but also fun, and the Fio FH1S as like your depressed friend that needs a kick in the butt to get them going. I will say that I think that I have a certain inexplicable affinity for the EA3 more so than the FH1S. During this review, I found myself missing the EA3 when I listened to the FH1S but I didn't really find myself missing the FH1S when I was listening to the EA3. In my eyes, the EA3 is a good combination of technicality and listenability, but I know that others might have the exact opposite feeling regarding this, as I know Dave from DVS Tech Talks did. Because of this, I tested preference amongst the two sets between a few family members and friends, and the results showed that most people, like myself, actually prefer the performance of the cheaper EA3. But I can't guarantee that your mileage won't vary and you won't have an alternative preference. I can just say for now that I think most people will actually prefer the EA3. In any case, hopefully this review can help you make the right choice for you. And with that, I'm out for now.